second guess of myself that I am the greatest of all time forever and ever. What surprise? What surprise? Woo! I'm back. To make it out the ice cold streets of the city, you better have a Christopher Word game with it. You better have a dance game similar to Diddy, or play beatball but a rim like Smitty, Josh, Chris, Bosh, Paul, Casal, or any other nigga that ball and tall. I used to send it. All right, we are here today with one of the young uprising stars in the mixed martial arts game, Sharif Bam Bam Jones. Sharif, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing good, look. Um, we up early Sunday morning. Um, uh, we feeling good here at Let's Be Elite uh, Boxing and MMA. Uh, ready to talk to you guys and then do a little bit of, um, do some work afterwards. Okay, why are we talking about Let's Be Elite? You're here with your boy Troy. I know you had a falling out with him in the past. Now you're back with Troy. Talk to me, why you back with Troy? And why here at Let's Be Elite, which is more of a boxing gym? But I know you get it all here, but why Let's Be Elite? So, um, to touch on the Troy, uh, as far as it, it made the most sense, um, me and Troy had a, um, had a fallout after my first, uh, Travis fight, um, it was due to some outside, some outside circumstances, but, um, as being two men, being two gentlemen, and as far as being two, um, two great competitors of the sport, him on a coaching aspect, me being as far as, um, in the cage aspect, it made the most sense, uh, we had to sit down, um, we made a great business game plan that was that's going to be beneficial at the end of the day to the both of us. He's going to benefit from it. I'm going to benefit from it, and um, that that plays a big part. And um, also, as far as I mean, he has the same mentality I have. I mean, it's a new world order thing. I'm bringing to the table, and we want to take over. And I feel as though it made more sense for both of us to do it together, to do it apart. So we reconnected. Um, being at a boxing gym, a lot of people don't. Um, a lot of people are not updating the software. It's kind of like the iOS uh, with the iPhones. Um, me, me personally, I think boxing is um, being a big part in the MMA game. I think um, back in the days with the Matt Hughes, with the wrestling and everything, was a big aspect, ground and pound and Tito Ortiz type games. But now, um, a lot of fights are becoming a little bit more predominantly stand up, and I, I see a lot of holes in a lot of these games, a lot of these guys' games because yeah, they have forearms, gloves on, so they feel like they have some good stand up. They hit somebody with a couple good shots, they rock them, they feel like they're good. I feel like me being in a predominantly boxing gym, um, my coach trains so many, so many great boxers coming up. Um, it's going to give me that extra edge going into the, um, going into my fights because at the end of the day, I still do have that strong wrestling base if the things was to go um, left in the fights. Well, I know there is several excellent fighters that you're training with here, so I know you're in good hands, and I know you're getting a work over in the room. Well, let's talk about the last WCC event. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking across the cage and I see Sharif, uh, Sharif Jones, the lightweight champ. He's over there looking like he's licking his chops. I heard him say earlier that he wanted the winner of this fight. Really? Really? You were there, was in Philly. I was kind of disappointed that you weren't on the card. <laughs> but after that event, the main event, of course, was someone who I have made respect for, one of the, the, the legends for me in Philadelphia and mixed martial arts, Will Martinez, who put on a memorable performance. I know after that fight, you wanted to uh, call him out. Tell me what you saw that make you want to call him out and what went into that decision. Unfortunately, Will fought that fight, half of it with a broken hand, so obviously you couldn't get him in the cage immediately. What did you see in that fight and what made you want to call out one of the legends in the sport? See, people understand, me and my boxing coach, Octavio, we've, we've been game planning about me um, catapulting my career faster than faster than the regular old just beating up a couple of the local guys so will's actually been on my radar for um uh for uh for a little bit um it was nothing too set in stone I, um as far as i wasn't sure how early i was going to take the fight but it was something definitely i wanted to do something that was going to jump start my career um now being k side instead of watching how you watch film on regular youtube fights and his bellator fights i was able to see an opening in this game whereas though i feel as though um, with me, with the training hours I'm putting in and everything, the, um, the age, the, the, my age, um, me being, uh, as far as like being at the peak of my career right now, I've seen a lot of holes that I'm going to be able to expose and I'm like, me personally, I feel as though it's going to be a finish in the second round against me and Martinez, honestly. Um, so, at the end of the day, I, I made the call out. Now, I didn't know his hand was broke at that time. I mean, I didn't see the whole x-ray thing to add. I had the, um, 
the interview with Eric already. But in the same instance, it's like people want to make it like, oh my God, you called out a guy that broke a hand. Dude, it's like he broke his hand about three to four times he talked about. So it's like, you don't have to fight me tomorrow with your hand broke. Like, stop trying to find something to make me the bad guy again. Like, take it for what it is. I seen something in your game. I want what you got. I'm coming after it. Just take it for what it is. Stop everybody getting in their feelings about the little small stuff. You're a fighter. I'm a fighter. I'm coming after you. Obviously, I think he's scared because it doesn't make sense. He's trying to figure out. He trained me for one of my second pro fights I won, and I won with him and Steve McCabe with. I trained at his gym. He's trying to figure out where, where is this kid thinking he can beat me at. So in his brain, he's thinking he knows something I don't. Yes, I do. And you'll see it in the cage once I'm punching you and I'm taking you down and I'm knocking your head left and right. You're going to be like, oh, he obviously knew he can beat me. So stop stop trying to make it about your hand. It's not about your hand, man. At the end of the day, do I respect Will Martinez? Yes, he's very known in the Northeast area. Yes, he was an excellent instructor when I trained on him. Martinez, BJJ, full of great athletes. I, had, I put nothing past that. But at the end of the day, he's a fighter. We're not in the same color banner, and I want what he has. So just rest your hand up, and then we'll fight when it, in due time. That's all. Well, it's very admirable because he's at the top of the game. Like I said, he showed some really great striking. He proved that he wasn't just a grappler in that fight. And I give you credit for calling out somebody. You just don't want to get another win. You want to fight the guy that's at the top of the mountain. And, and that's very admirable. Very admirable. So let's talk about a couple other things. Okay, WCC. You're, you've been working with WCC. You're fighting for WCC. What's in the future what do you have in your mind? Do you have a fighter in mind that you want to fight that you're gonna that you have on the docket? What are we gonna see? What's your next move in your career? Yeah, so um, the next the next move we're gonna make after I watched the Martinez interview and um, he talked about the reasons why he, he shouldn't fight me or the reasons why he should fight me. It was kind of confusing to me. He wasn't straight, too straight what he wanted to do. So um, I decided to make the decision for him instead. So what we're going to do is um, I talked to Octavio um, um, as far as, and I talked to, and I talked to Troy about it. And we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to weight class. We're going to go down to 145 pounds because he talked about how he's not going to fight me at 55. I got to come down to his weight. So we're going to go down to 145. He talked about how I didn't have fame in my name. I never fought nobody relevant. Okay, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go after Jordan Morales. He holds the 145-pound title for WCC. I hold the 155-pound title. I go after him, and I beat him, and I take that I take, I take. take that belt. He can't run no more. Can't talk about fighting somebody relevant. I hold the belt in the same promotion you just fought for at the weight class you fight for. What's up? And Will was scheduled to fight Jordan Morales for the 145-pound belt before Morales got hurt. And Troy Whitman, who was a hell of a fighter, stepped in, and Will still won that fight. So going down to 145, you've had trouble in the past, Sharif, making 55. Let's be honest here. Listen, we're, 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 I'm, you're my boy. You're my boy, but I, 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 I tell it like it is. You had trouble 55 before. You're telling me that you changed your diet. You got, you're working with these guys now. You think 45 is doable for you, and if you do, do you think you'll still have your strength and your endurance? Yes, yes. Um, I have a nutritionist for this fight camp and everything. Um, at the end of the day, it's like I told everybody, like it was my fault. It, um, it's an embarrassment at the end of the day to the sport and to myself. It was the first time I ever mixed weight. But like with anything in this game, like they, I mean, they they whisper your accomplishments, they yell out your failures. It was one time out of 14 fights, and I was coming off a year layoff trying to make trying to make a hard cut. At the end of the day, like I said, it's my fault. But that's not trying to ponder on it too much. That's not take away from the from the great things I've done in this sport by the three finishes I have on my record, band band three and one. So. At the end of the day, we're going to go down 45. I'm walking down a, a lot lighter than I'm usually are. People don't understand that I used to cut the 55. I used to cut from 192, 196. I'm walking around in the 180s without even without dying in a train of heart. Fight camp starts December 1st, and I'm be on my diet. We're going to be ready. We're, th we're predicting the Jordan Morales fight to be in March, just because as far as it gives me and him time, as far as get the venue together um, and everything, as far as um, make sure all the contracts get signed. It gives me proper adequate time to cut down the weight without cutting too much of my muscle because people know how hard I preach my strength and conditioning, which is out of level 40 with Greg Garrett. Um, I preach my strength and conditioning being a big part, so I don't want to lose none of my muscle. And I plan on being stronger. I mean, I dominate these guys at 55. Why not down at 45? Oh, I think you're going to be quite surprised at 45 at how much stronger you may be than these guys because your body's going to be naturally bigger. So very interesting. Yeah. Sharif Jones going down to 145 at WCC. One of the things that can affect the fighter tremendously is emotion. 
out the cage and in the cage, okay? It affects your training, it affects your everyday life. Now, I know someone so important to you, not just in your fighting life, but in your, in your, in your real life. You lost recently your cousin. I know that you came out and said spontaneously that this was going to be your last fight. I hope you reconsidered that. But talk to me now. You lost your cousin recently who was a huge part of your life, getting you ready for fights. First of all, I want to wish you, wish you condolences on your, your, your terrible tragedy and loss. Talk a little bit about your cousin, what he meant to you, and going forward, how you're going to be able to separate that emotions from training and in the cage and not let that weigh you down, kind of trying to make it bring you up. Yeah, I mean, um, my cousin was a big part of my fight camps. He was actually, um, you uh, you be the guys see him a lot in my pictures. Um, he actually was the first guy that I, I ran and hugged um, uh, as far as uh, when, I, when I won the belt and everything. Once I had the, um, the strap around my waist, he was one of the first dudes I hugged. Um, at the end of the day, he was he was he was a big he was a big part he was a big part of my camps. Um, and it's just crazy because I didn't make that post. I was gonna be my last fight because I just didn't know how to take death and everything. That was the first time I ever lost someone in my family that close to me that I talk to on a day to day basis or call and I see. So I just didn't understand how to pick up from there. And um, it's crazy because he was at my gym on Wednesday, probably the week before he passed, because um, he was an auto mechanic. So. He's putting um, five quarts of oil in my car and everything. And um, uh, we were talking about the Martinez fight, and he brought me two monsters. We talked a little bit, and he said, get in there, baby boy. Um, we got to get to the UFC. Let's go get these belts and everything. That was always our, oh, so get in there, baby boy, man. Let's go get these belts. Let's go to the UFC. So, um, I mean, it was very hard. But the crazy thing is now that now that I, I get that, when I, when, I, when I come here now and everything to the gym, I get to see I get to see his spirit. So so it's a it's it's a I'm sorry, give me, give me a minute. Go ahead. It's okay, Sharif. Listen, I know he was very important to you. I get to see his spirit every time I come into the gym now. So that's a good thing. Um he made me stronger. He made me put a lot of things in perspective. And he made me turn the game the game speed up to hundred now, two hundred. At the end of the day it's like these guys could come at me, man, they could talk about how I talk stuff or how I do this and that and everything. I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter, and I want to be the best, and I plan on being the best in the sport, hands down. So I'm going to come after everybody who has something I need to take from. Jordan Morales has that 45 title, so I'm coming after it, and I'm going to take it. Juan Martinez has a lot of fame. I feel as though that's going to catapult me up to the next level, so I'm going to take it. So at the end of the day, me and my cousin talk day in the day aspects. I get to talk to him every time I step into the gym. He gets to give me that extra motivation, that extra push, and that's what I, and, and that's what I need. So we're not going to retire. We're going to go and we're going to get these belts now. So these guys, they got to be prepared for me. They have to be prepared for me. They have to. Because now I got that extra. I got a walking angel behind me pushing me with extra motivation. want to go to the show obviously that's what every fighter wants to do they want to go fight at UFC or Bellator now listen you have the whole package you just don't have the experience yet you got the good looks okay you got the personality okay you have the wrestling you have strength you have speed you have a great fan base you have everything that all these promoters around here want why WCC tell me why you're fighting the WC what what can WCC bring for you I feel like they're hands down top promotion in the game. I, my career, my career wouldn't be where it's at without WCC. I don't fall for a bunch of promotions coming up, all the way from Pittsburgh, Allentown, everywhere. I don't fall for a bunch of promotions, and WCC has done a lot for me. Um, as far as the outside of the cage, I mean, even the situation with my loss, my family, always been in contact with my big cousin and his wife and everything. They're being a big help to me. And um, as far as if you, Bob, you've been on there. You you didn't post interview me for a lot of my amateur fights and everything. You've been um, a big part of the WCC family. Makes it that much easier for me. You always want to fight here. Everybody asks me plenty of times. Go fight for CFFC and everything. These big other promotions and no knock on these guys, but this is home. This is where this is where the champions are, are raised, man. Um, we're going to get a lot of these guys to go to the show out of out of these out of these out of these camps. 
from this promotion. Um, I believe nobody puts on a better show than Doug and Mike. Um, nobody promotes their fighters better than these guys. Um, the airtime, the nonstop uh, promotion, the, uh, the social media, which is very, very big. They conduct it the best. They give all these guys what they need, their 15 minutes of fame, because the show is not promised. Honestly, getting to the UFC and Bellator is not promised. So, no offense, we got to get our nut while we can right here, right now. And they're making that. My Travis fight is the biggest fight. People know me fighting a dude from all the way out from Harrisburg because of Mike and Eric. And they're going to know about the Jordan fight. And I'm going to be a legend in the game at that fight with Martinez based off of what Mike and Doug is putting together. So I think these guys always been there for me, always helping me out in anything I needed. And they're making me the star I am now. Well, take it from me. I got some years on you. Whether, whether it's at home, whether it's at the gym, whether it's out of the cage, it's always about family. I'm glad you're getting treated that way. WCC has treated me the same way. And uh, listen, good luck with your weight cut. I'm rooting for you. Like I said, you're, you have the whole package. You're exciting. I feel honored to be cage side when you're fighting. On our way out the door, anybody you want to thank? Anything you want to say before we head out? Yeah, I want, I want to thank um, my whole fight team and everything. I want to thank Octavia um, for Lesbian Elite. He was the only one that opened up his doors to me um, for this transition between um, for the uh, for my last Travis fight. Took me in and we worked and we came on with the belt, uh, bringing the first pro MMA title to, uh, to a predominant boxing gym. So which was very exciting and it's showing that we're trying to make the sport evolve. So you need to catch up now. Um, uh, as far as Troy, I want to thank Troy and everything with Grappling Nation, getting me started on the grappling and everything. Uh, we, we savages, man, we're coming. We're coming as far as it's, it's the type of get down and lay down mentality we got right now. And <clears throat> people people got to get with it. Um, Mike Pickens, WCC, I want, to thank, I want to thank the family. Bob, i always been waiting to do an interview with you for the longest. I want to thank you for coming. And um, everybody that, that showed their support and everything through this uh, through this tragedy week as far as my family um, from NPR, Endurance, um, Eric, uh, Ch uh, Coach Coach Chucky, um, Zoo, um, Pat17, all the guys were sending me text messages. They're always checking up on me. Um, on everybody, I know I didn't talk too much about NPR, but they're, but they're a big camp. They're a big a big part of my fight camp as far as my second home, my wrestling, my MMA game. So without a doubt, I want to thank them for being uh, for being there for me too. And then we're, we're going to go out we're going to get this belt. So Jordan, don't worry about it. Me and Doug, me and Mike already talked about it. People understand confidentially, I will be sending them my updates and my weight with pictures, meeting them at the house, stepping on the scale. So behind the scenes, we're doing something to reassure. I don't have to explain myself to, to these cats. Just get into the cage and take this loss. Stop focusing on the weight. Focus on the butt whooping you want to take. Like, I would have said the A word, but my daughter's here. So, can't get too savage, but just focus on the butt whooping he's going to take. Focus on the takedowns I'm going to do to him. Focus on the punches and bunches I'm going to bring to him. And then Martinez, make sure you be K-side so you can try to watch the fight.